Hello. My name's Ryan. Training vlog. Oh, what are we up to now? Like five or six? I don't know. One of those. Um, not gonna lie, it was difficult to uh, get into the garage today. You know, like not much of me wanted to train today. And I think that that's um, something that's probably not depicted as accurately as it could be on Instagram. The notion that like, you know, I mean, my whole thing is training is fun like it is, but like training is also very hard. And it is hard to find the willpower to train on days where you may not necessarily want to train. So, today let's see if we can flesh out some of those answers and maybe scratch a little bit deeper than the, the superficial conversations of, oh, well, you need discipline and motivation will only carry you so far. Let's actually like try to find some practical ways to increase consistency because the reality is most of us have a full-time job, friends, family, relationships, side hustles, etc. things that are um, just additional responsibilities that will take up the same time that we would use to train. So let's try to figure out some ways that we can train more consistently today and get in a freaking stupendous workout. Here we go. All right, I don't have an exact quote today, but I have a, a quote, what a, I'm paraphrasing here, paraphrasing. Jung said something like, Carl Jung, find as many different ways as you can to communicate the same idea. Meaning like, if you are trying to articulate an idea one way to one person, they might be able to get that idea exactly for what it is, but maybe you could use an analogy of that idea for another person and that would hit the nail on the head for them. So it's like, uh, it's trying to be a better communicator. And the more ways that you commun the more ways that you can communicate the same idea, the more effective of a the more effective of a communicator you will be, and that also just establishes how grounded you are in that idea because you can communicate it all these different ways. You said something like that. He didn't exactly say this, but he said something like it. The first thing that comes to mind in terms of maintaining consistency <clears throat> and you probably shouldn't establish this as number one and the factors that influence consistency in the gym but I would definitely say it's underrated I wouldn't put it in my top five it's definitely underrated it's a good pre-workout you know when there's like something in your shoe and you can't like figure out exactly what it is and you like go to try to find out what it could be and you don't see anything, you put your foot in and you feel it again? What is that? Pre-workout is sort of like a cheat code in that on my worst days when I don't feel like training, I know that I can drink my pre-workout. That takes very little effort. And if I drink my pre-workout, there's two parts to that. Not only does it make me want to work out and it gives me energy, right? From the caffeine, whatever other stimulants there might be in a pre-workout. But it's also like a psychological buffer in that well, like I'm not gonna drink this pre-workout and then not work out. That would just be totally weird, right? And honestly, that probably motivates me more to get into the gym when I drink pre-workout than the feeling of the sensation of ingesting a good pre-workout. It's like, I took this pre-workout, I'm just gonna like sip on this pre like a glass of wine in the evening, like that's just weird. My wrists are the number one joint that's gonna keep me from getting into a good front rack, just from like the sensation of it, like that's the most painful joint that I have in terms of it being pushed to its limits when getting into a front rack. And I don't think it's because of lack of mobility. Like I have plenty of mobility in my wrist. I think it's these big freaking, freaking pipes you see here. These cannons. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, not really. Like 
my biceps do kind of get in the way of the front rack, you know? Like, so, judge me. All right, get into some Spider-Mans next. Just working on bending the thoracic spine. Stopping when I feel like I get about midway down my spine. Oh, thoracic spine? What are you, an anatomy teacher, 101? He must have a kinesiology degree, the, the thoracic spine. All right, kicking today off with the second random Olympic lifting complex that I've thought of. Clean pull, hang clean, jerk dip with a pause, then a push jerk. There's like no rhyme or reason to the sequencing of these movements other than like I thought of them. So that probably means they're pretty random. Just kind of grease in the groove here. Oh, you gotta be one with the barbell. It's gotta be an extension of you. Still just getting kind of loose here. No real rhyme or reason to what I'm doing other than I just kind of want to feel the barbell. Feel front rack, feel extension, just kind of grease the groove, you know, like hitting off the tee. You know what I'm saying? Just take a few swings, hit one pull side, hit one oppo, hit one down the middle, just to kind of, you know, get the, get the gears moving. We are getting there. Nod to the gods. Have to work that out. Continuing that conversation on consistency, this is a point that I'm like trying to consistently and subliminally like articulate through my Instagram is like find training that you are interested in. I don't care how sweet and advanced and amazing your program is if it's like boring, right? And you don't, and there's exercises and like modalities that you don't enjoy doing. Like Find a method of training you like doing. Do you like, because each style of training has its own like flavor, right? Like bodybuilding is so much different than powerlifting. Powerlifting is so much different than Olympic weightlifting. Like experience these different things and figure out something you want to get better in. The more interested you are in it, the more excited you'll be to train, the better your sessions will be, but also the more that you'll learn like outside of the gym. You'll look up videos, you'll read articles and books on this thing. And the more that you learn about training, the better your sessions will be. It's just like the snowball effect that influences consistency because you're getting better at it. And if you're getting better at something, like that's just all the more reason to continue doing it, right? Let's hit this bad boy one more time.
program, you've almost certainly heard of the power the shirt tuck will give you. But I haven't unveiled the secret of the jogger tuck into the socks. That's next level stuff. I wouldn't recommend doing this at first if you've never done the shirt tuck. I'd start with that and then go to the sock tuck. The sock tuck might just be too much for you to handle at once. It would be like uh, like listening to Creed for the first time or something like that. It's just kind of face melt, a face melting experience, you know what I mean? <laughs> What's the power here with the sock tuck? You might need to avert your gaze. <clears throat> Watch this in, in flashes or something like that, you know? <sighs> Don't say I didn't warn you. Man, that push jerk is a jerk that I've just never really enjoyed. It just doesn't seem to suit my body. Some people make it look so crisp and fluid. Like, I feel like that's just not me, but that's all right, you know? That's all right. Still gonna get it done, right? I gotta reestablish the sock tuck here. That's just not gonna cut it. Wait, ain't gonna lift itself right off. This is the point where I'd say something cool, but I can't think of anything. Consistency, consistency, consistency. Consistency in terms of a practical sense is probably better demonstrated through long-term consistency than only thinking about it in an acute schedule, right? So I imagine where a lot of us struggle with the idea of consistency is that we think about it maybe from the perspective of, the perspective of workouts as getting in every single workout that we have scheduled for a week. I have four workouts scheduled for this week. I've got to make sure I get every single one in on the days that they are scheduled, right? As you and I both know, life often doesn't unravel like that, right? Things happen, you have a meeting, you have an emergency, you didn't sleep too well the night before, and there's things that can potentially get in the way of you working out on the scheduled day. The goal is to always get the workouts done on that scheduled day, but you should give yourself a little bit of grace. Move a workout where you may need to within the allotted week, right? Maybe cut a few sets short, maybe skip an exercise, maybe skip a workout altogether if the situation at hand calls for that. Don't be afraid to do that. You never want training to feel like a chore that you have to just check the box of. And it can be that way if you are consistently training in circumstances where you don't want to train because of you know, extraneous uh, things happening in your life. Give yourself, give yourself a little bit of grace. It's okay if you don't get every single workout in in a week, right? And as long as you, as long as you establish a long-term rhythm of consistency, that's what really matters. <laughs> One of the most 
most important things, I think, is to acknowledge the fact that at some times you will not want to train and training will lose its zeal, right? It will lose that glimmer a little bit. And it's okay to feel that way because anything that you repetitively do, probably like regardless of whatever the activity is, will eventually start to feel stale. That is the nature of things. Except for like maybe bass fishing. Bass fishing is always dope, you know? There's nothing like that top water time. It's seven o'clock in the morning. Come spring, Whew. Anyways, it's okay to feel that way. Don't feel like there's something wrong with you. Um, just understand that it's part of human nature. Set number two. <sighs> 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 Let's conclude this rant on consistency. I think deep down in its core, consistency in training has nothing to do with like discipline or courage or like a, a kind of like a holier than thou kind of perspective where it's like, oh, look at me, I continue to train even though it's hard. Like it doesn't feel like any of that. Truly, like in my decade long now span of training, it just feels like a direction that I'm heading, that I want to head in. You know, it feels like, it feels like training is this goal post that I will never reach, that is always a little bit in front of me, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I don't think there's ever any end goal I don't think there's ever any milestone that I really want to reach. I think it's more of like a north star, right? Something that just helps guide me. At least that's what it feels like to me. Training is fun.